So there's a quote. I ask every student that works with me on an ongoing basis to memorize it. It's just three sentences long, but it contains five concepts. Uh, so let's, the, the sentence very simply is, I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience. I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And here's the kicker. Here's the big one. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and I receive as I have asked. Now that, that last one, that's the tough one. You know, that's like, I ask for this, you know, whatever it is. Well, you know, you're experiencing it. So if you're experiencing it somehow or another, you must have asked for this to be part of your life experience. You know, so for example, um, I had cancer back in 2001, 2002. And I remember at the time that I got the diagnosis, uh, my first response was, no, no, this is, this is not in the plan. I'm, I'm sorry, the, the business, uh, you slipped up. No, you, you've got cancer. And this is, this is, you know, and not only did I have cancer, it spread, you know, so I had an operation. They removed a tumor from my gut and uh, 18 inches of colon. And then they found out that it did spread into my lymph system and probably other organs. And so it wasn't a really good diagnosis. You know, I could, <laughs> and, and the way they did it, the way they told me about it was when I was still in anesthesia, I, I understand I don't do this anymore. Uh, the, the guy came to me and while I'm coming out in recovery, uh, he says, Mr. Mundy, I have to tell you the cancer spread. And I'm kind of going, well, that's really nice. I don't know it's cancer spread. You know, I, I'm in la la land. <laughs> four o'clock the next morning wide awake thing and you know the cancer is but this is not good news i'm not going back to sleep i'd like to go back to sleep can't go back to sleep can't go unconscious you got to face this you know well i won't go into elaborating what happened to it. boy it's something really nice happened. uh what was really nice that happened was they said okay i'm gonna die <laughs> uh, what the heck we're all gonna die I'm just leaving a little sooner than some of my friends. I think it was 58 at the time and um, made peace with it. And once I made peace with it, I realized that I probably wasn't going to die, <laughs> even though it wasn't a good diagnosis. So I lived. So that's true with the regardless of everything. So the first step in, we don't have time to really go through all of these, but we'll just look at them very, very briefly. I am responsible for what I see. Projection makes perception. That's in the first line of the chapter before, I mean, the section before this particular section. So whatever is out there in the world, it, you know, people will sometimes get this wrong and think, well, I made up that car, I made up that cab, you know, I made it, no, you know, I, but you make up your interpretation of it. You make up your analysis of it. And not only do we do that, but we throw, it's good, it's bad, it's pretty, it's ugly, it's nice, it's not nice, da, 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 da. And that's where all the problems come in. The problems come in, and it could be good or bad, actually. <laughs> we could kind of overdo the good. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's particularly when it's wrong, it should be fixed, and it's outside of me, it's you, it's your fault. You're the one that's screwing up. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that you're, you're the, the difficult person. The course would really ask us to never see ourselves as the victims. That's, I, I lesson 31 from the course, one of the most important lessons, I am not a victim of the world I see. And then another really important lesson, I think it's 135, if I defend myself, I am attacked. Right? That's sort of the opposite of it. I'm attacking. Enough. And if I defend myself, either way, whether I'm attacking or defending, I'm making a projection out onto the world that isn't true. I need to, I need to just, I mean, what I may defend myself. I may honestly have a defense. That's a real thing. I'm not saying that, but it's what, what it means. when you says, don't defend yourself, I mean, don't defend your silly ego, your body. You definitely, you know, if somebody attacks your body, you better defend it. You don't want it to get hurt. You know, and you don't want to facilitate air in somebody else by letting them you know, let yourself be beat up. That I don't think so. But I'm responsible for what for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience. That's the second part. There's only two possible 
feelings you can have. The Course is so clear. It doesn't give us three possibilities or four or a dozen. There's only two possible ways you can see anything. You're either looking with eyes of love or eyes of fear. It's that simple. I, I'm, I have fear, I have, I have worry, I have concern about what I'm seeing, or I'm loving what I'm seeing. Now, loving what you're seeing is certainly a heck of a lot better way of seeing the world. It's been very interesting, the definition of Jesus that appears in the Course. It's a very interesting definition. And the way the word Jesus only appears about a dozen times in the whole Course. And this is in the, the clarification of terms. And I love the definition of Jesus. It says, Jesus was a man who saw the face of Christ in all of his brothers and sisters and remembered God. Whew. How did he rem by seeing By seeing the face of Christ in all of the, his brothers and sisters, he then remembers God. One of the most basic principles in the Course, and actually in life, the Course says the most basic principle there is in the universe is the law of cause and effect. So it goes around, comes around. As I give, so to receive. This is the old karmic stuff from the Hinduism as well, right? It's what we put out there is coming back your way. So be thinking about what you're putting out there. So Jesus is a man who saw the face of Christ. He looks out and he sees the face of Christ reflected back his way. And he doesn't see the problem. And, there, and that is what makes him, and that's just true for all of us. It's by seeing the love. That's what happens when we fall in love. When we fall in love, we don't see any problem. You know, we just see the love. You know, and the love is the thing that, that, that gets us excited. Oh, I mean, that, that is a mystical experience. That's, that's often the very first real mystical experience a lot of people have. It is the first time they fall, become cognizant of falling in love. By that, I mean... Um, when I was a kid, I was in love with my pets and my family and nature and things like that. Without, but when the the first love, the romantic one, when I tumbled in, when I crashed into it with my high school sweetheart, oh God, it was you know heaven. That was heaven, <laughs> you know, <laughs> falling in love. All right, so it's either that I I am responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience. Third line. It's not third a line, but it's part of the next one. <sighs> I choose my experience. I decide upon the goal I would achieve. There's only two possible goals. It can be three or four or five goals. And the goals are, I'm either going for truth or illusion. If I'm going for truth, I got a good chance of finding out what heaven is on that. If I go for illusion, if I make up this world and I make up myself and I make up a, a personality with a bunch of degrees and letters after their name and and money and status and chairman of the board of trust, you know, whatever it is, this is all a makeup, you know, that, 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 that doesn't make it. There are no doctors in heaven. <laughs> we need a doctor, but there's nobody there. <laughs> you know? There are no captains or lieutenants or what do we need war type people for? You know, there's no war. You know, it's all these things, all these titles, all that stuff. When you get right down to the end, none of that matters. The only thing that matters in the end, and people on their deathbed, will, or people who are, I, I read this thing just the other day on YouTube, it was about what people regret at the end of life. And there was a, 10 things, and it was interesting, and they graded them in terms of what was number one. Number one, I didn't love as much as I could have loved. I, I didn't give as much as I could have given. You know, I, I didn't contribute as much to the world as, as I took away from I I could have given more, you know, I could have shared more. Sharing is what, what's really important, right? I could, I, there's a definition of God in the Course in Miracles. It's not a definition. It's a, it's a phrase. It's divine abstraction, which is another nef, definition for God. Divine abstraction takes joy in sharing. And you that is that our greatest joy. What are we doing right now? We are sharing. And it's by sharing that's that's the connectivity. And the Course says the way that the Holy Spirit works is the primary function of the Holy Spirit is communion. Or it's communication. Communication leads to communion. And it's by really communicating. You know, this is, a, I, I love you and I love you. <laughs> you know, that's really communicating. You know, that's it's breaking through, right? So...
I'm responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience. I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And here's the big one, the really, really big one. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for. That's because the Course in Miracles and the Course of Love too. The Course in Miracles says that this is a classroom. We deliberately decided to sign up for this class. And we decided up for all the classes that we signed up for. Oh, here's an interesting class. Look at this. This is this 101 divorce. I think I'll sign up for divorce. I wonder what I could learn in divorce class. Or here, oh, look at that. Bankruptcy. I could sign up for bankruptcy. Or here's addiction. I could try an addiction. What can I? <laughs> <laughs> and who chose these classes? You know, who chose to be? And really the tough ones is, you know, why did I choose a particular illness or difficulty? And the people that go through that and then the solution and I receive as I have asked, if I can do this somehow with grace and patience and understanding, who, you know, Helen Keller, blind and deaf, both says, I thank God for my handicaps, for through them I found myself, my work, and my God. My God, what a thing to say. I mean, here is the most handicapped of handicaps, right? And still has an appreciation for, and grows, grows out of it. That's the, that's the remarkable thing. For so that's kind of what we're going to do, except it'll be in more detail than, uh, in 90 minutes than we have in 10 minutes or 15 or whatever well, I, uh, I can attest to the fact that we can receive the blessing even in a virtual environment like Zoom because I know that I am experiencing the world differently than I was 20 minutes ago at the beginning of this conversation. 